Congratulations, you have found the How the Heck Have You Been podcast, a show about catching up with old but not forgotten friends. My name is Mark, and every episode I call up someone I've lost touch with over the years and ask them how they are, what the heck they've been up to, and what life has taught them in the interim. Let's get to it. All right, my guest today is yet another drum major from LD Bell Marching Band, Davis Cox, and here are his yearbook stats. He was featured on not one, not two, not three, but four pages in the yearbook, a solid score. Once for the talent show, once for marching band, once for jazz band, and finally with gloriously spiked hair in his senior portrait. Here he is, Davis Cox. Davis, how the heck have you been, man? I've been good, you know? Um, I guess that's kind of a broad question, given that it covers a large <laughs> swath of time. 19 years since you yeah. graduated, right? It's true. Steve said uh, he's planning his, uh, he's planning his reunion. I just found out that there, we are doing one. I don't know. Uh, I have not heard anything official, but I'm also like not on Facebook anymore. So I don't know. Yeah. I noticed Maybe. that. So did you have a tenure? Did you go to your tenure? I did. We did. It was kind of fun. So, um, this is already getting into like heady topics, but I, I it, it's kind of funny because we're, I think actually my year graduating, my freshman year was when, like when Facebook started. Yep. Um, and so it's kind of funny because so my graduating class was like the last or the, rather the, the, the first class that like never had the post high school like oh what have you been up to it's like no i knew what everyone was doing by spring yeah <laughs> so we had we had a couple months where maybe there was like a disconnect but yeah it's kind of funny so uh yeah um it, well because of that like there was gonna be like the the traditional like you know th there was like a big planned like sit down dinner and i think it was like 75 bucks a head and uh -huh. stuff like that and then they were like and then also we're gonna like meet up at a bar in fort worth and everyone's just like we're, we're just gonna do that and so nobody <laughs> nobody paid for the ticket <laughs> and i feel bad for whoever planned all of that stuff that didn't happen because it just eventually canceled and we all just like went to a bar and drank which sounds amazing right that's it what was we should all time. do it was a good yeah. time yeah and i don't I remember think so i don't think sally went to that did she so you you grew up with like next door to my wife in uh yeah in Hollyville, and you guys were office aides together <laughs> I forgot about you, that. You yes. Did you? Yes. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll just tease this a little later. I have both of your yearbook dedications to us to read for oh you no. later on. Uh, oh nothing, no. nothing too, nothing too bad in there. Okay. Well, that's but good. The, the only thing I heard about that was there was a joke. If you got had, if you two had gotten married, um, her her maiden name is Grab, uh, and your your last name is Cox. So that would have been kind of funny, but it would have been extremely amusing you have to reverse the the name i've never actually had any more of those jokes ever since high school did you know that i've never had anyone joke about my last name ever it's never happened i toyed with the idea of of <laughs> making one and i thought <laughs> nope take the high road it's uh, been 20 years show that you've matured at least that much yeah well i mean it's 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 low-hanging fruit in terms of it is you know, and it's such a easily, common name too it's true it's true so i think we all we just all we all deal with it accept it and move on Mm -hmm. All right, so this will be a good. So let's jump back to high school. Um, yeah, tuba line. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to. I tried to get this in my my talk with Steve. How lucky and fortunate all of us at Bell were to have just lucked into that program. And yeah. I know I remember Earnhardt at some point saying there are there are some students who you know moved to Bell just to be in band, but I think for the most part it was just a bunch of us sophomores walking in. And like, oh, this is amazing. And this is really regimented. And uh, I guess I'm going to do some amazing things. And I'm just 16 years old. And I'm going to go to Grand Nationals. And do we, we play sixth, right? That first year, your junior year? I think sixth uh, and then fourth. My senior was, year, we, we went back. I thought, it, I can't remember. I thought it was fourth, but who knows? Um, and yeah, no, it is kind of, and, and that was just, that was what you did. Because that was the only experience that we sort of knew about, which has kind of the, been the main thing I've been stewing on as as you asked me to, to come on here and just thinking about like high school in general. So this is 
uh, I'll, I'll get back into this later. I'm actually working on becoming a teacher. So it's having nice. me think through a whole lot of like my experience and, you know, our experience, I guess, in public school in Texas versus, I don't know, how it is everywhere. And there's the variety of experiences that they have. And, and yeah, I mean, we, we, we went to a very um, well-funded, well-organized school. I think, um, yeah, it was awesome. And to your point about, like, lucking into, like, going into something kind of amazing, the, the, yeah, I graduated and we, you know, we thought we were big, big deal stuff when it came to Texas marching band. And then I moved to Tennessee. So I went to, to college outside of Nashville. Oh, um, nice. So immediately, like, no one had any idea who LD Bell was. Yeah. And, uh, even all my friends that were in band were like, what is, I don't care. And, and actually, that was like, first off, just a great uh, lesson in uh, um, humility, I yeah. guess. Um, but, but, so the school that we, we went to, um, Middle Tennessee State University, uh, which no one knows because the sports teams are terrible. Um, there was a, a marching band contest there for like the high schoolers in Tennessee. And I'm sitting in my dorm freshman year, like the windows open and all of a sudden start hearing, I think it was like, what is it? King of Kings. Like what, what was the, the, the show I Exodus. did sophomore year? Exodus was my Exodus. sophomore year, yeah. Yeah, so just start hearing that music playing outside, and I'm just immediately like, "What the? F <laughs> <laughs> That's trippy, <laughs> and like, yeah." And like, run downstairs, and yeah, it was um, some marching band from Tennessee, and they had bought the show, and they were doing the music, and so wow. like, I went and talked to the band director, and and felt like a celebrity for all of about 15 seconds. Um, it was kind of funny, and he was like. We've That's got crazy. one of the former drum majors of LD Bell, and he yeah. said, you guys sounded great. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, i got to leave now. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. Are, yeah, man, and, those and, two shows, King of Kings and Exodus, that's some incredible music. In fact, I'll probably splice in some audio right here of that because I still <laughs> I have some recordings of that. And then the next year we went. Do you remember so that you, so you were drum major for what was the binary? What was now what was it called? Yes, it was binary systems. Binary systems. And I remember playing yeah. the finale of that. And it just it was just like several sixteenth notes and that was it. All of the same yeah. note, like maybe concert C or something. Da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And I remember Earnhardt looking at Pollard and Pollard looking at Ernhardt. It was like, we gotta talk to we gotta call Mark real quick. So that was uh, oh I forgot about I that. I remember yeah, it the, promptly getting that, uh, getting changed. The ending to that got like reworked and reworked and reworked because yep. yeah, initially it was very like. <laughs> so and on top done. of on top of the amazing experience with the band in general, then we were both members of the tuba line, which was yes. such a crazy brotherhood, especially because we I think we had five. I want to say there were six of us, but maybe just five sophomores. And were you the only junior? I was the only That's one what I thought. of, uh, um, yeah, I mean, well, I think, it, I, I feel like just the, the tuba naturally just attracts the weirdos of the band. Absolutely. Not that everyone's weird. It's just, you're, everyone's a little, you're a little off right. if that's, if that's what you're going for. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and that kind of, uh, works out nicely because everyone's just got kind of a typical, you know, like, Hey, let's, let's do something kind of silly, kind of goofy. Cause also we're all. Uh, struggling with carrying around what is it several 35 pounds, pounds or 40 pounds 30, yeah. if 40 40 pounds of brass in 100 degree heat in texas outside we were definitely given the widest berth by the directors to to do our own thing yeah uh, <laughs> we were like a island unto ourselves <laughs> did you did you go to the um did you go to the camp out i feel like somebody didn't we, we no, a, I did. You did. Okay. We did what have was a camp out. I have very few memories of that. And and Steve. We set a lot of things me. on fire. Wait, say that again. We set a lot of things on fire. That's what I thought. Was that when I th feel like we built a fire and it got out of control? We just kept yeah. adding. I think that was me because I was like, "Hey guys, I'm an eagle or I'm a boy scout." I wasn't eagle at that point. 
I know yeah. how to, I got this, bro. I was like trying to impress you guys maybe. And I just kept throwing more wood on because I was so happy that it well, worked. And eventually I think like, I feel like a basketball got thrown in, some cards. I jumped just... over it at one point. Steve yeah. Has, and then, Steve has and then evidence a of park that. ranger came and told us, hey, please don't Tone burn down. down this forest. Steve's memory um, is that that didn't happen because he wouldn't have allowed it. Oh, no, that absolutely <laughs> happened. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I forgot entirely about that. Yeah, that was that was a fun. We went, I went camping a bunch, actually. I realized that that year. Um, that's really funny. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like it, it's funny. You know, we um, obviously spent a lot of time together because we were in band and stuff. But I, I, you know, we were in different grades, and I don't know that I really saw you that much outside of a band. No situation Although, so you'll notice i'm wearing the tuba it's kind of i noticed to this okay. oh i definitely was underneath, like underneath i've got the floor crew shirt oh my god oh now, okay were you on floor crew for <laughs> yes i feel like you were right i did i was so that was... was our only other main interaction I think, yeah was... so for <laughs> anyone listening i guess the floor crew was so there was there was you know winter drum line happened and then also the the color guard would do winter guard but that would be inside, and so they would need, like, a gigantic... Those all competitions would take place in, like, a gymnasium. And, you know, these girls are all flipping around and doing things. Um, and so they would have... Every team would have to bring in their own, basically, like, floor. Yeah, like tarp. that. You like a oh, was it just a tarp? Well, I mean, it was like no, I mean, it was more extravagant. It, I, I know thought it was, was like a tarp padded -like material, thing. but designed and painted and sewn together. Yeah, to that's meet the what theme of the show. And right. for those who don't know, Color Guard or Winter Guard, these are the 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 wonderful young ladies with flags that do mostly ladies. I assume it's... mostly ladies. We didn't have. I don't think we ever had when I was there. Uh, we didn't have do it, but there were several boys who would from other schools. Yeah, maybe my senior um... year. I think that but, things uh, are probably Brian Dutton is now doing it uh, as a as an adult. He's now teaching. That's it. awesome. Yeah, that's right. I need, in fact, I need to get him on the show. I think he said he would he would come on. That's very but, cool. Um, yeah. So we so okay. Not to open up old wounds, but it's mostly just the boyfriends of the color guard. That's who it is. Uh, <laughs> Basically, yes. So were you dating Carly Repas? No, I was dating Leah Stanfield. Lee. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, Lee, yeah. Was Carly even in Winter Guard? Was no, she yeah, she... I, I think she I was. don't remember. Yeah. Anyway. I, maybe? I don't think so, but possibly. So, yeah, we, did, possible. we didn't spend too much time together, um, but you, you're one of those... You're interesting because you're one of the few people who knew both Sally and me in yeah. high school. Would you have I ever forgot. guessed that we'd end up together? uh no probably not i, I mean probably mostly not me mostly it's just one of those things of like i didn't know those two people knew each other but i and we didn't in high school do. oh okay so we met so up that... we both uh worked at olive garden shout out to the og oh man uh down if by the there, northeast mall family for, yeah for a summer and we really didn't even meet up i mean we knew each other from that and then we connected through facebook later because she went to tcu um i went to unt but my but toby and claire two of my better friends from high school uh, went to TCU, so I was there somewhat often, mm. and so you know we kind of just connected on Facebook and started dating. There you go. And we just celebrated eleven years. Oh my god! Is that right? No, twelve years. Twelve. All yeah, edit this. I, Hold on. After us? No. <laughs> we, <it's> a, <laughs> we just celebrated twelve years. There's... I got that right the first time, right, Davis? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> um, that's very very funny. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I guess I I can I can get into my post high school. Yeah, tell me where'd you where'd you go to stuff. college? Because I have no idea. Since then, I have no idea. I haven't even stalked you on Instagram yet to try well, to glean details. So uh, I went to Middle Tennessee State University, which is in Murfreesboro, which is about thirty minutes outside of Nashville. Shout out to Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. Um, I felt we felt really famous also to go back to two thousand four because it was in a strong bad email. Everyone, everyone celebrated that day. Oh, nice! <laughs> you, the name of the city was, or the school? The name, and he makes fun of the name of the city. Wow. Um, why do I remember that? But um, uh, yeah, because I wanted to study audio engineering, and um, they have a really good school for music business, and so went there, did all the like pre 
rec classes and then the, the 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 course was split into you could do music business or audio engineering and i realized that audio engineering involves first a lot of math which i'm terrible at and secondly like crazy weird hours and not a lot of job security and i chickened out and i uh <laughs> so yeah. i went into the music business side of stuff and which led me to doing marketing for about the next 12 years. I graduated college in 2007. Um, I got married there. I met my wife actually in our, our dorm freshman year. We lived there in the same go. building and we we're like, hey, I, you're neat. Um, and we moved to New York right afterwards. Um, right. And I got an ad, a job at a um, social media marketing agency, which uh, it, social media wasn't even really yeah, a term. It was like it was new media, um, which means nothing. Um, but yeah, and, and we, we originally were going to do work like with a bunch of record labels. And so we were going to do the music thing. And then we all kind of quickly realized that like m music industry budgets are terrible and, <laughs> and we could make more money going for like bigger brand stuff. So, um, yeah, worked at, bounced around a whole bunch of different agencies in New York. Now was your um, wife doing the same kind of stuff or was she? No. So her, um, background, she graduated college with a degree in Spanish history Sp Game Spanish liter literature, Spanish literature history. Regardless, uh, it's it, she jokes frequently that it's incredible that she ever got a job, um, and yeah. she's kind of fallen into a pretty incredible career working in localization. Um, not so much doing the localization, but that's a really involved process of a lot of different assets and managing those teams and putting together those those systems. And so, um, so what is I don't know that term. The localization like, like of... you know, like uh, we got a show. It needs to have subtitles in Spanish and oh, dubs okay. in French and all that junk and and figuring out how to pull that stuff together. Um, so we were in New York. We had our first daughter, uh, Clementine, who is now oh. seven and a half. Um, Great name, mother. first grade. Thank you. We like her. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, we moved to Tennessee because um, my company opened an office in Chattanooga, which is actually a really rad town, um, but like no one knows about it. So it's kind of even better that way. Um, and then she got offered a job out in Los Angeles at Netflix. And so we moved out here and that's where we've been now for the past five years. Um, <laughs> she was actually pregnant with our second daughter, Josephine, um, as she was interviewing. And then so it was like December twenty. 16 yeah she's like interviewing and they're like hey fly out here and she's like medically i can't <laughs> um ha uh, our daughter was born january 3rd she flew out there for a day like mid-january um like three weeks after having given birth which is nuts and uh i think possibly the insanity of it they were like okay you're crazy enough to do this so you must be committed yeah we moved out there in March, and so uh, Josie was three months old. So we we have like a small human to remind us how long we've been in LA. There we've you go. In, yeah, that's a nice here. marker. We've been I, in here this long. When I was a um, when I was a teenager, my dad would always rattle off dates of when a song came out. He was like, "Oh, this was you know 1968." Like, how do you? That's impossible. Like, how do you do certain that? Certain things just kind of. And then you get older, and you're like, "Oh, because you have Mar like that was my junior year of high school." So now I remember. Right. Yeah, you're able to connect one thing to another it's like uh uh have you seen the, the movie high fidelity no John cusack oh uh in the middle no, of that maybe movie. I, so no, I'm he's like a giant oh uh, he's a giant record nerd and in the middle of the movie he's like having a crisis of self and his friend comes over and he's he's like oh you're organizing your records he's like it's not alphabetical it's not chronological and he goes no it's autobiographical. <laughs> <laughs> That's I know that I bought this single for somebody and didn't give it to him, so it goes in September twenty. You're like whatever. What's the, um, What's the movie about the record store with like Liv Tyler? Oh, that's uh, what am I uh, of? Empire Records. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, which is also an incredible time capsule of a movie. Yeah. Um, that glosses over some also like stuff that you're like oh one of the characters like has a suicide attempt and we're just not going to talk about it because this movie's for fun yeah. um but no it's it's a uh, it's also a quality music movie um so yeah that brings uh we've, we've been in la i was again working in some ad agencies and then to talk about knowing specific dates i decided i was just kind of done working in ads and i felt like it was a lot of gnashing of teeth 
to make a Facebook post that someone sees for five seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. And was like, I need to do something else. And my last day was Valentine's Day of 2020. That's All a right. weird way to say that, 2020. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, March 12th, the world stopped. So I had yeah. a month to try and figure out a new career. And then I became a full-time dad. <laughs> and um so you know so did as that we're make all coming... your decision easier i guess you're like oh, look, well, yeah, yeah yeah um and uh yeah so i'm going back to school now to become a teacher the idea of becoming uh like a high school english teacher i think or hey that's school. me yeah kind of i did not know this yeah so i've i, I taught five years at grapevine high school um and I was going to say earlier that, uh, you know, even having worked in a couple districts around this area, it's like HEB, the, the district we went to, is still lauded as one of the top, like, districts in the area, like one of the best, hmm. one of the best run and all of that. But so I taught five years there. I took three to be a stay-at-home dad um, and to work on a book I had going, which I have finished and am now querying agents with constantly nice. to try to get a, some representation. Um, and then I went back to a little early college high school. Still part of the GCISD, but it was on TCC's, our community college, their, their, one of their campuses. And a, an early college high school is, for those who don't know, it's basically like dual credit on steroids. Mm. Freshman and sophomore year, they take mostly high school credits with a couple TCC classes mixed in to get that dual credit. And then junior, senior year, they're basically all, all community college all the time, um, wow. earning dual to, to graduate high school with their associate's degree. Um so they like, in fact, they get their associates before they get their high school diploma, which is kind of cool. That's wild. That's awesome. Yeah. What are you teaching? Uh, high school English, ninth grade. Oh, well, yeah. hi. So, I'll have uh, to bother you with questions after yeah, this absolutely. that I'm sure would make riveting radio. Uh, but I, uh, I resigned from that position last year. COVID played a little part in it and it was just mm -hmm. a lot. My wife's working full time as a nurse practitioner and, um, you know, our kid, our kids were getting a little older. It was kind of hard to, for us both to be full time and we were fortunate enough for me to be able to to hit the brakes and i subbed for a little bit and then got headhunted by a private school so i'm teaching like just six hours a week it's pretty they let me route my own schedule and it was they were they made it very easy for me to go from subbing in the district for a couple of days to to teaching half the time that's very cool and so i'm that's currently fun. working on subbing actually um which has been kind of fun uh i hate it i hated it uh <laughs> no i loved so i love why the, do you hate it the cool thing was I was subbing for the school I had just left, right? And so I knew, and mm. it was a small school. There's 12 teachers. There's like 400 kids, 100 kids per class. So it's super small. So I knew every kid in the building, even the freshmen, I was there for their orientation the year before. And so I knew everybody in the in the school. So subbing there was like me just going back to work, but not having the responsibility, which is exactly you know what I wanted. <laughs> but I would sub a couple other days at, at back at Grayfront High School. And uh, it's like... You have literally 30 seconds to try to get the class in shape, right? And like set set the tone and, it, and then it's all downhill from there if you don't do it right. And, um, and it's so quick and they have no reason really to, to listen to you because they're just going to, I mean, they're going to do their thing. There's a, there is that. You ever watch Key and Peele? Oh, yeah. There was a great skit. It's not the substitute skit. Everybody knows it's, it's the other one. Um, and he comes in and he's like, got this. Like, I was a former, I was in Vietnam, I'm a former or whatever, black ops. I'm not going to take any crap from anybody. And all the kids are just kind of staring, waiting, saying, no, let's get this lesson started. And he bends over to open his briefcase and accidentally farts. <laughs> and, and, and then he just backs out of the room, right? He's like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> no, because it's like, that's literally the margin of error you have subbing. Yeah. If no, you I've definitely noticed any that. sort of an itch, they'll take, well, it, they'll take a mile. But, so I've uh, mostly been doing like eighth graders because, yeah, I, or, 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 or seventh grade because it's funny, like going into this, I keep hearing like, oh, man, junior high is like rough. And it's, it's subbing, at least for those ages is kind of funny because you can just basically goof with them. But they're also like still kids. So there's at least there's that margin of like, yeah, you're you're the grown up. So I'll pretend to listen to you. They haven't quite realized that, like, you have no reason to actually listen to me. I have no power. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> And to be clear, I love teaching them, right? Like I loved having my own classroom and setting the, you know, throughout the year, setting up the expectations and building their trust and goofing off with them as well. But subbing, it was like the, with the kids I didn't, I was like, oh, I forgot. Because I graduated college in December 
And so I had a semester where there were no job openings, right? So hmm. I remember applying for a sub at Grapevine Colleyville for that whole semester. I subbed two days, once at Grapevine, once at Colleyville Heritage, the two high schools. And then I was like, nope, I'm just going to wait for a teaching position open. I want my own room. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, I am working on getting my credential and then also a master's just – I think my cat is scratching at the door, so I'm going to let nice. him in, and he'll probably talk, too. It's a great, no, great tiger kitty? Uh, he is, I don't know, he's he's old, he's a cat. He's, yeah. he's a, I believe that's his official breed is It's about cat. how I feel about him. What? Come on. So you mentioned, you mentioned, like, the history we've been through. It's it's crazy when you think about, my my first year of high school was 9-11. Right, September, yeah. like the second month of my high school experience was September 11th. Wow. And then we went to nationals. Like, and then we had to fly to Indianapolis, right? Like, I don't oh, yeah. even remember that being an issue. But you were a drum major. No. No, I wasn't. No, you were a junior for that I was, show. I was a junior for that so, show. So, like, how – I don't remember them – I mean, I remember for a while because that we went in November, right? So, that was only two months after 9-11 that we all had I to fly 200 I kids did, up to Indianapolis. did not even think about the fact that it was two months later. That's... Yeah. Isn't that crazy? insane um i do remember that there was quite a bit of intense security stuff um yeah and then, and then social media i mean we we grew up text messages you had to pay for them <laughs> right you remember yes. that yes oh I yeah mean, i think it was my sophomore junior year uh, i got the first phone and that was like new technology you could instant message people and of course mm -hmm. aol instant messenger we were all on that Yes. On all hours of the night, waiting to see if people would respond or if they were there. Away messages. That's right. Away I remember I remember Trey can answer at one point. His was the uh, the speech from the Matrix, the architect from the Matrix. He put that Very up there. Nice. That's a solid choice. It is. It's a great <laughs> speech. And Starbucks was new too. Like Starbucks was our high school thing. I think they like we got a Starbucks, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Because uh, we always used to do Sunday Star Starbucks Sundays. Yeah, there was there was the one over by the mall, and that was the de facto hangout spot. And that was right by my dad's house, so that was cool because I could just mm. ship me right over there. Very nice. Drink some Starbucks. <laughs> I the thing is, I didn't drink coffee or anything coffee esque, so I would just go and just like not have anything. I would just hang out, <laughs> and I'm sure they loved that. They had the Izzo. They had the sparkling grapefruit. That's really oh cool. yeah, I would have one of those guys. That's really funny. Um, yeah, it. Uh... So that was actually, you know, going back to the, I mean, I'm sure everyone wants to hear about being teachers, but Let's um, do it. It, it, it is funny, like, you know, just going back into a classroom for the first time, because I have zero context, and it's like I haven't been in a, in a classroom for the past decade and change. And I was like, oh, yeah, uh, these kids have a completely different experience than anything that we went through. Um, you know, there was not social media, like the idea of cyberbullying when we were you know, a kid was laughable. Somebody might say something mean on AOL. Um, so that I, not to say that that happens constantly, but you know, it's like um, phones and everything else like that. It's, it's very interesting just to, to be like, I, you know, have no concept exactly of your day to day and, and trying to kind of wrap my head around some of that. It's, it's all, it's like 80% of their social life is digital. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And and if you get bullied, you're getting bullied in front of millions of people. Like literally, almost sometimes literally. I mean, not that many people will see it, but sure. that many people have access. Right. And that, you know, I mean, it's it's the entire school instantly knows who said what to whom. And yeah, well, t that's kind of part of the reason why I also stopped wanting to work in social media in general. Is, um, I don't know. It I kept feeling like it. Uh, like I would be checking Facebook or whatever. And I'm just like, what am I getting out of this? And I can't think of like, there aren't a whole lot of positives that I was able to draw from it. And so I was also be between seeing it from a user perspective and then also seeing it from a work perspective. Like when the whole, do you remember the Cambridge analytical Cambridge Analytica scandal? Yes. That happened? You, so yeah. uh, the quick refresher on that is basically um, it was like a political organization that was, getting access to uh, Facebook user data that they were not using 
properly. Um, I, like I, I can't remember if it was like non-anonymized, so they had actual people's names, um, or they were just selling it to other folks. But what's funny is when that happened, I was working at a, an agency that was doing like a lot of crazy paid media stuff, and I was like, well, yeah, that's just, that's just what everybody does. <laughs> And then you realize, like, oh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> this is not a good scene. That's not good. Like, <laughs> and you, you kind of start to realize, like, how much of your information that you're putting onto these platforms is being sold that you aren't aware of, and also from so many different sources. Um, and so it just kind of creeped me out. And so I was like, I, I got to get this. I feel like I'm, I'm a part of something I don't really like. Um, what's, what's scarier even than that is the amount of people who don't care. The amount of people who yeah, don't have the reaction you do, and it's just like, hey, you know, we give up all of our privacy for for the <laughs> the benefit of. Well, the the moment where I started to get real que creeped out was um, actually uh, grocery store rewards programs. Yeah, because <laughs> no, I'm serious. So no, I know I'm you, scared. I'm just laughing because I'm scared to hear what you're about to say. You have your email or phone number connected to one of those, and so they know. So now the grocery store, Kmart or Kmart, why, why don't Kmart, Kroger, or whomever, like, knows, oh, you bought hot dogs today. Well, they can then take whoever runs that program. The reason why they're doing that is because they can then take that data and sell it to whomever who can then combine that with Facebook data. And so now we go, oh, we know we have an email address over here. We have an email address over there. And so now you can get ads on Facebook to buy more hot dogs yep. or whatever. And just knowing that, like, that's one little point and how many different there are i was just like eh, this is... i sound like a like a like i need like a tinfoil hat right now but no everybody um, else does man eh, eh. yeah so at any rate um a... a whole lot of reasons why i was just like i don't i don't need this so i try to limit the amount of time that i'm on a lot of social media which is why i wasn't on facebook but um I was listening to a podcast and he was saying he, he and his wife had had an argument the night before it was a fairly heated argument um but neither of them at any point mentioned breaking up or divorce. Uh, mm -hmm. But the next day he got an ad on Amazon for divorce lawyer. <laughs> and like he yeah, you know, could have been coincidence, the... but that, you know, that level there's... of AI, I don't know if it's out there, but if it is, that's, that's pretty crazy. There is always the, the, is it, is it, is my phone listening to me? But he was like, you know, I've never gotten ads for this before. Yeah. There, there has I to be, you know, there's an algorithm. I don't choosing know. that somewhere and it shows it for them. <laughs> But it's definitely possible. It's definitely feasible. I don't yeah. know. It's 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 certainly weird. So, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Um, how about this? What are you doing for fun lately? Oh, for fun, nothing. I don't think exercise. What? That's the that's the. I mean, you got your. So you've been doing your your drawings on Instagram, which I'm very amused by. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, they're a good time. So I, you know, I had been doing that kind of artwork since high school. In fact, I remember drawing, I remember drawing Mr. Farrell's uh, music theory class for IB and him getting mad at me senior year for drawing in class. Uh, <laughs> but, regard, but regardless, I'd been doing that for a while just for fun. And uh, during COVID, you know, we were all stuck with, with literally nothing to do, uh, you know, homebound for, for weeks. And so I was like, well, I'll just start drawing and do some time-lapse videos to, to kind of give some people something to look at you know, of you know, here's a cool drawing I did during COVID. Um, and then I did a couple of those and people were like, hey, you should try to sell these. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll start a small business during COVID. And so, I've, you know, that just kind of has snowballed a bit, not out of my control, but it's it's snowballed into a bigger snowball than I thought it was going to. So now I'm doing like craft show every two weeks. And those are going, awesome. I mean, those, I've had a I've had a couple pretty good showings. Nice. Um, uh. but that's become, it was, it started as being fun. Now it's more of fulfilling work. I mean, I love doing it. Um, but to actually relax, uh, sleep, I guess. <laughs> Cause I'm, <laughs> it's, this is going to, I may sound disingenuous, but, uh, I mean, spend time with them, you know, the, the time I'm spending with my two girls, um, mm -hmm. is the fun, you know, I got to get my fun in there. And sometimes it's not as fun for them. Cause like, Daddy needs to relax now, girls. Let's play something where daddy can sit down and play it and not yeah, uh, not be running around or playing, you know, pretend. I feel bad. I'm like, I'll play how literally you anything you want if I don't have to move. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how old are you, kids? So I've got seven-year-old, seven second grade, and a five-year-old. 
Nice. Yeah, that's, so that's, I'm, I'm home three days a week because Sally works three 13 hour shifts as an Oof. MP because, you know, which, which is hard, but she gets two days off and okay. she's off Mondays. So we, she kind of has a three day weekend every weekend. So it's, you know, trade offs. Um, but we've enjoyed that. So those are the two days I can, I can teach in the morning and I get out at 1130. It really is a cushy position I've got right now. Um, cool. And then after that, <clears> I'll spend time, you know, with the girls I do, I exercise get i'm you know trying to get healthy that's always good covid i feel like covid 19 was the 19 pounds we either lost or gained oh yeah i definitely like almost to the number gained the the uh quarantine 15 there you go uh and uh yeah so working working through that um that's funny i need to be doing exercise but i am not (laughs) i i should be i should be doing more that's funny though. Uh, well, so it's cool that you're doing art kind of as like a a actual. I don't know if it's like a main gig, but it's 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 an additional source of something. It's yeah. I mean, it's it's like halfway between a side gig and a and a main gig. Now I'm getting more interest in commissions as well. Nice, because I can work the hidden stuff and the detailing, and they so like people like to do that because they can you know include inside jokes or dates, names, and stuff. Of, oh, fun of important stuff. So that's, I mean, it's been fun because, you know, put it to good use. And, uh, but then I'm also trying, you know, I'm an aspiring writer, as I mentioned. So I've got a second thing I'm working on there, a children's book I'm trying to write. So I have, I've got a lot of small irons in the fire that, you know, that's why I resigned last year. I was like, I got, if I'm having this many irons in the fire, I should take out the biggest one because, because I need to. Yeah. So now you can take over for me. Oh. Because people are desperate for good teachers, as you may have heard. I'm working on it. Yeah, no, it seems definitely like a time to uh, where you can you can you can find a gig just by, you know, like, um, so my my stepmother uh, has apparently started substitute teaching, and she went into like never never been a teacher at all, and like they live in kind of a small town, Texas, and she went into interview for a substitute position, and they were like, great, do you want a full time role? <laughs> Which is only mildly concerning that it's just like yeah you're a warm body um yeah with an iq over 100 that's all you need man (laughs) it's all they need prerequisite is breeding so Uh, how far along are you in that process in the um, i don't know much about california so i imagine it's probably as stringent as texas uh yeah probably i mean so i am working i got about a uh, about another semester or two left to finish up the credential which allows me to then teach in public schools i could teach i could start taking a full-time gig like at a charter or private school if i wanted to yeah um but i kind of feel like i want to at least sort of know what i'm doing on a level um before i jump in there also i I just i've started this thing i want to finish it um i feel like i've done a great job of starting and then stopping a lot of different things and so i'm like i just i want to finish the thing and do the thing um and that said uh i haven't left uh a, a, a class or a sub gig or anything like that and just been like oh i'm so annoyed i did that um so i've like actually re- you know i'm really en- enjoying all the material that i'm working through and, and anytime i'm in front of the kids it's actually been a lot of fun too so that tells me i i feel like i'm at least uh headed the right direction with oh, i think you'll be this. great the well, kids will love you i hope yeah i mean the the, oh. the number one requirement is that you know you're not you, that you could be our self-effacing and that you're not the you know any ego can be a problem right like yeah any I've, sage uh, on stage any i you uh, know i use that term in the lot the last episode but like as long as you're authentic they're gonna love it because they get so yeah. much that's not you know i've kind of noticed that too like i feel like i um have gotten a better reaction from any of the kids whenever i'm just like just being a normal human being also i get amazing bonus points from them by uh knowing what like video game they're talking about i'll be like oh i know that one yep (laughs) video game music is good too video games are better uh, um, so what's... outside of um you know regular day-to-day life i've also become a, a gigantic dork um i've gotten <laughs> wait i was for a while i was um writing about video games for a couple different websites um oh nice and and so uh you can't call so video did... game stuff dork anymore man that's mainstream i guess the, i guess not yeah well i mean and it's gotten worse I've, i don't know 
uh, <laughs> a bunch of other like weird hobbies that have developed over covid just for finding stuff to do um i've also been like doing some music stuff for fun so that's i, I sent you a photo of like i was gonna ask this, yeah like, audio audio gunk i have sitting next to me um which uh post edit right here I think I had one of my reverb pedals on my mic going for part of the episode. Nice. <laughs> so it might sound weird. <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, I didn't pick up anything on. All right, on cool. If you didn't hear it, then all right. And anyway. So what kind of, uh, do you play anything in the instruments or is it mostly <clears throat> just like uh, producing? So I I played bass guitar. Oh, that's right, for jazz band. I, play, I yeah. played in the jazz band and I played in some, some rock bands there and played in a couple of rock bands in college. And... Um, and whenever I was in New York, also played in a, uh, what was the genre that the guy called it? It was, uh, it was basically like grungy, um, punk rock. And I, I played in a band called Vomit Face. Yes. Which is just am amusing. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, I, I've always liked, um, like weird noise music. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. So were you, like... so with a band called Vomit Face, I imagine mm -hmm. there's a lot of, stage performance as well in the way they're playing or was it and i this i picture you in the background nah. not doing any of that on bass and this lead singer uh, i don't know no there was there was a fair amount of uh de detuned basses uh fuzz pedals multiple and uh some yelling involved as well all right all right <laughs> uh, is there any video of this i want to maybe i'll pull some audio um is it on itunes the, the, so i played on the 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 first ep and um and then they they went with somebody else because <laughs> let's not right, get I'm go buy that and uh first, well, you don't need to buy it what's that um <laughs> nothing <laughs> no um so that that was fun and um yeah so i've been just kind of making like some some sort of ambient noise stuff uh the past few years which has been fun so i have a bunch of like weird synthesizer and reverb and delay pedals and make a bunch of weird noise um which is probably awful and no one wants to hear it, but I enjoy it. So it's been fun. The reason why I was asking about like, what have you been doing for fun is because I've just been uh, finding um, personally, like uh, a lot of hobbies fulfilling lately, just as a way of, um, yeah, and so, so a, way, a way to fill the time in a positive yeah. way is what I guess I'm getting at. That's a, one of the silver linings I think of, of the pandemic is there's so many people who have pursued, stuff they couldn't have otherwise done unless they had you know, four, four to six home. months where they didn't have to go into work. And yeah. So there's a lot of that. Now you mentioned Nashville. I'm a huge Jack White fan. Oh, um, nice. I don't know if, if I, he, he may not have been there when you were, cause I know he, was he in... wasn't. So it's super funny. So I, I lived in outside of Nashville from 2003 to 2007. Um, Nashville wasn't cool uh i mean all. until jack white moved there i bet no well i mean i don't know if it was jack white or what but it but it is really funny like i remember like it's music city right and like it, i would want to go see bands and know they would play atlanta or louisville or memphis like no one would actually come through oh, wow. nashville because like no one would no one would play there um and then i'll remember uh i think it was like 2000 2013 uh, I was talking to some coworker, and he's like, "Oh, I'm taking a vacation to Nashville," <laughs> and what? immediately I was, I was just like, "Why?" <laughs> he was like, "Oh, well, like the food scene's cool. It's like a cool town." I was like, "Oh, okay. I didn't know that." And yeah, now it's now it's like a, a really popular destination. I don't know. It's funny. It's like that that city specifically is. It's like that. Like Nashville and Austin seem to be in the two cities oh, that yeah. have just had massive dramatic changes over the past few years. Yeah. Um, in terms of folks moving there and, and just changing the vibe of the town. It Which was a great actually, scene when we, my Sally's got family that has lived there forever, I think. And uh, so we went, I was able to go, I think it was, a, we went to a wedding. I was able to go to Third Man Records. Nice. The Mecca. The Mecca. It, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's funny. I hadn't been um, until about like a year or two ago. I went in and I was like, oh, it's, it's a Jack White store. Yeah. <laughs> like there, there is a lot of Jack White stuff. That's all it is. That's mostly it, um, but no, I have a, a ton of friends that live there. Um, and actually, I was I was back in town um, for a good friend's wedding uh, last summer, and it, it was kind of funny because it was like everybody's sort of first post COVID hang, mm -hmm. um, and and everyone kind of had this like 
is this okay? Are we all going to die? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, that I mean, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, it, it, it was a really, it was a really fun time. Um, so that's that actually, you, so you're still in HEB, right? I am. I'm area? in North Richland Hills. Nice. Uh, it, so how, how has that changed that you've noticed over the past decade and change? Uh, it's just gotten, it's just gotten bigger in the sense of, of more developed, but I don't feel like the atmosphere has changed at all in the way some of the big towns have. Mm. But I, I mean, I was driving, I had a friend who lived like Northeast Dallas and I remember driving an hour to get to her apartment for a writing group. There were like four of us that have been meeting for the last like seven years to critique, crit, critique each other's writing. And I drove for an hour and never saw a patch of trees together. Like it was just all Metroplex. It was all suburban or or sprawl. I'm like, man, this place, DFW area is just a huge uh, hmm. developed city. Like all one chunk. Of, I mean, we have parks and we have stuff in the middle, but it's like, how can I drive for an hour and there's a Chick Fil A, you know, every five minutes, and there's a huge mall every five minutes, and it just didn't stop. There's no country. There's no wide fields. It. I. Uh, I, I. I used to joke like, you ever watch like, uh, like old like Scooby Doo cartoons from the sixties yeah. or whatever, and there'd be like a chase scene and, and the background loops. You can tell like yeah. to save yeah. costs. Like it's like, oh, you see the same window right. five times. I feel like that's driving on the interstate yep. through dfw is it's just like the same five chain restaurants or so um which i mean for convenience sake is awesome it's great um but man it's uh there's a lot a of lot. there's a lot of cool places to eat there's a lot of cool little microbreweries all over the place nice uh i go every friday and meet up with some of my my guy friends from my previous job is, you know, just down the road is great craft beer. They just make it and we drink it and it's all local and all right there. And there's another one five minutes down the street. That's just as good. So. <laughs> nice. I mean, uh, well, there, there, there's definitely um, a more focus on uh, local businesses than I think was the case when we were in, in high school, which is um, good. It, it, less just nonstop chains for everything and, and like trying to find local spots yep which has been at least positive the hipster um, did you buy into the hipster movement and that oh oh god so hard it's bad it was bad yeah, i mean I that's a lot jack, of, I, jack white i feel i feel like he's the ultimate one of the ultimate examples i i had a lot of deep v-neck t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> let's just put it this way <laughs> yeah but there i mean uh, to, like that's a funny movement and i don't know much about it uh, I kind of want to. I kind of want to look into it, do a little research on that movement in general. But it seems like they had the right notion and took it to such an absurd extreme that yeah. it became that it became the anti. You know, they were so considered about so concerned about authenticity that they became inauthentic about it. It's, well, it's 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 a. I think it mirrors a lot of like you look at um, like hippies in the '60s and and you know any kind of counterculture yeah. movement. Yeah is eventually eventually going to become um popular enough that uh either you're going to get people who are just like in it because of the cool clothes uh, or um or it becomes kind of co-opted by uh, companies and whatnot yeah. and, and then it becomes less cool it, you know it boils over and becomes like right. meh. um and i guess that's uh just gonna happen not not to say that i think that there was some sort of actual ethos behind <laughs> like the the two thousands hipster movement, other than just like uh, detached irony and um, I don't know beards, uh, yeah. But and the, the mustache too, the whole the whole yes. mustache craze. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. It's it's kind of um. So, talking about that buddy that I went to go see his wedding, I actually met him because um he started a online beard contest in 2003 <laughs> and you know it was we would he basically made it a little micro social network on his own and it was called we, no shave we, november and he started no it. oh no dang okay we we hated no shave november because those guys were fakes that's right now um they're, they're no, not would be they're like, a year or more it was like than that. every every two years we would grow a beard for like six or seven months and take a photo and put it on a website and it, eventually it's honestly a decision that i've actually grown to respect more and more i think the last year we did it was like 2012 or 2009 and he was just like this is too big it's weird 
we're gonna, I'm shutting it down. And everyone's like kind of bummed, but also in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, that was, that needed to be done. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. The beard but I've actually wound up with some of, some of my better friends that I've had ever since that. And it's, it's very awkward. Anytime I was like, how do you guys meet? It's like, well, there was like a beard website, <laughs> but, but it was more about like <laughs> taking cool photos and creativity than the beard. Anybody who took the beard aspect was a little too, anyway. Wait, nice. if, if something takes that long to explain, it, you're already losing the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the, I feel like the one thing we haven't talked about uh, is parenthood. Like how how's how have you loved being a dad? Hopefully you have. I just assume yeah, it's been awesome. You seem like a good dad. I've really loved it. Like it's the least cool thing in the world to be like super excited about. Um, but it has been so fun. Like just. You know, everyone, everyone's like, oh, parent, parenthood changes your life. I'm like, yeah, basically parenthood, like, blows up your life in basically every way possible. Um, but in exchange, you get something totally different and in a way is a lot better. And that's yeah. actually been great. And I've really loved it. Like, Somebody put it, they, they destroy your life, but then they build you a better one. Yeah. And um, so it's funny, your 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 kids are the same age as mine. I'm and realizing. both Although, girls, right? We both have two girls. Yeah. Yes. Although... Uh, Clem is in first grade, I guess, because of birthday, whatever's. Yeah. But um, it's been awesome. I mean, like, just the idea of, like, uh, uh, hell, what was it? Like, like a month ago, introduce them to the the idea of punch bug or, or, or slug bug. Yeah. Like, like that's a good you one. know, getting to, get, I mean, not that that's important, but it is just sort of one of those, like, things that everyone knows. It's like, all right, I've got a new game for you. It's going to blow your mind. You get to hit your sister. <laughs> Yes. And they're like, oh man. And and you know, stuff like and and like they're both kind of learning to read and getting to introduce them to that kind of stuff. And it's it's been really cool just to kind of see sort of the lights turn on um as they become little people. Yeah. Granted, uh everyone of course is always like, Oh man, once once they turn into teenagers, it's gonna be awful. And I'm like, I'm sure that you know, we already get hints of just like histrionics over just oh, stupid yeah. crap. Um, it was like four years old. So the first time from Samantha was I accidentally mispronounced the protagonist of Frozen, Anna. And Samantha was like, Dad, it's Anna. <laughs> like, you're oh, four man. years old. Stop it. <laughs> this, well, I thought this was going to happen at like yeah. 11 or 12. Oh, no. You're, you're, oh, you're you're doomed. Well, and also just um, like also watching a person like gain a personality. Mm. Um, and realizing how much of that is, you know, part partially just stuff around them, but also it's just partially like just how you're made, how you're baked. Um, you know, like uh, one, one of my daughters is like, you know, just loves being cozy and being kind of lazy and hanging out and, and, but also like loves science and math and stuff like that. And then, uh, the other one is like just super like girly, like princesses and dresses and and all this and like we didn't push any of that stuff no. and in fact we were kind of like you know d didn't really buy into the idea of like gendered toys and things like like we didn't find out uh what what you know sex either of the girls were until they were born the we day were like, eh, that was, uh, i think one of our one of, one of the midwives we had was like there's very few good surprises you can plan for and i was like that's i like that there you i go. like that way of thinking about it um and yeah you know we, we never pushed any of that stuff but no she's just like always running around being in a dress or whatever and um so it's just fun seeing them kind of become little little, little human beings yeah i remember talking to one of my friends who had who had had older kids and i said when samantha was maybe still one or two i was like yeah, i'm still trying to figure out what she's going to turn out to be. And I think he thought I had some control over it. Like I thought I haven't figured out how I was like, no, no, I'm oh, just yeah. like, I know I have zero control over that. That's, that was clear from like day one um, that this is like a little person that, that already has all of these. And actually Steve and I talked about this the last episode too. It's like, they're just instantly different from each other. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, I read a book by, I think it was Steven Pinker called, um, Oh, the human con no it was it was basically about nature versus nurture mm. and uh you know his his final conclusion was basically 50 50 you know it's like <laughs> 50 of it's hardwired in and the the other 50 is culture but you can't change that that 50 percent that that's so deep inside your cells pretty much yeah 
Cool. All right. Well, we're getting to the end here. I've, ta- I've taken up a bunch of your time, but... Oh, no. I don't mind at all. This is fun. As promised, I have a special Uh-oh. challenge. And uh, before Uh-oh. I do, though, let me um, give you my prepared statement. <laughs> but <laughs> I am sincerely grateful, Davis, and better for having known you. You are just one of the hundreds of kind, generous, and benevolent people I know in a world where we need every single one we can get. So please keep being awesome and doing awesome things. All right? Wow. And I mean that. I wouldn't have reached out to you otherwise. There are several names I've already crossed off my list that I'm not oh, going to call. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No, that means a but, lot. Uh, I mean, w- one thing I, I didn't get into is just um, like uh, 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 like mental health stuff. And, um, you know, that's uh, that, that that means a lot. I appreciate it. Sure. Hearing, hearing something like that because it's, yeah. it's tough. We've been, yeah, I've been struggling a little bit. That's, you know, part of the reason that I resigned teaching is um, when I said it was getting to be too much, you know, there's there's a, a lot in that statement. <laughs> a lot of mm-hmm. waking up at 3.30 and not sleeping anymore after that because I'm like, oh, crap. What, I got to do this. I got to do this. So uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're going through. Um, it probably sounded way more dramatic than I meant it, but I just was saying, I appreciate that. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and, you know, I think a lot about, it strikes me that it doesn't, the, the world doesn't have to be full of good people, right? Like I can imagine, I can easily imagine a Darwinistic world where we're all just ruthless, you know, and, and horrible to each other. And I'm just, I'm grateful to be in a world where that isn't the case. And there are people like you and, and the people that I'm going to be talking to this on the, on this podcast. I appreciate um, it. now on that note, I'm going to be mean to you now. And I okay, think... Cool. I don't think you're going to beat Steve's score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quiz. Okay. There are 10 questions. Fill in the blank. Okay. You have okay. seven seconds to answer each question. That's a very short amount of time. These are, t- well, you either know it or you don't, right? That's what Miss Vanner mm. used to say, Hershey your high. <laughs> so uh, seven, so this is tuba section rules and guidelines quiz. Oh, God. <laughs> now, Steve, now, in, in your defense already, he wrote most think, of these. I was going to say, right. Steve wrote this. That's <laughs> cheating. So we'll see how you do. We'll give you like a 30-point 30 30 curve. Oh, okay. All right. Number one, rule one of the tuba rules specifies you may never pick up a blank in any form or fashion. Oh, crud. I know. remember this being a rule. Is it uh, a, a clarinet? Oh, no. Close. Color guard flag. Uh, Which I'm sure we both broke that rule, having dated color yeah, guard. Peppers. Probably, probably. Number two, rule six states that blank must be worn to all pep rallies unless a formidable excuse presents itself. I believe that would be the the shirt, the the tuba shirt. Think right? think more, think deeper, Davis. What else did we wear on top of the shirt? Uh, I don't know. Trash bags. Oh God. Do you remember that? We wore trash bags. <laughs> Why did we wear trash bags? <laughs> I don't know. I assume Paul. I assume Ashcraft. I think was that was the that. Paul Ashcraft thing. Which, by the way, I hope you talk to Paul on this. I do too. I need to reach out to him. You uh, should. Rule sixteen, number three. Rule sixteen mandates that anytime anyone screws up, the phrase "blank" must be sounded. I believe it was a was it a dot. A dot dot. Here, I'll give you a hint. The phrase "My God, blank" must be sounded. Oh. I think it was you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was talking about you. People. I don't remember. Who don't who was remember. Tribrow? Well, that was uh, Darren. Yes, and so I was. U- Unibrow? <laughs> no, I don't know. Mini Darren. <laughs> Mini God, Darren. Mini Darren. Oh, All right. I was like, is that an eyebrow joke? I can't. Remember. Number four. Ru- I I can't remember Brett's nickname, or yours for that matter. What was your nickname? Uh. I think it was Dakota, and That's I don't right. know why. That's right. Yes, yes. I have no clue where that came <laughs> from or why. <laughs> All right. Rule 19 states that pink shorts can only be worn by blank. Who's the only member of the, the tuba line allowed to wear pink shorts? Was it Andrew Creech? No, Garrett Rosser. Garrett Rosser. That fits. He pulled him off. Yeah. That Rule fits. 31 informs us that blank is not a drummer. Steve. Steve Pratt. There you go. Ding, Steve ding, Pratt ding. is not a drummer. All right. So far, so far, so good. Rule 39 cautions that blank should not be worn with the sousaphone unless the individual wants a possible malignant scar on their posterior neck region. What type of shirt should not be worn? Oh, well, probably it was a 
uh, say not it, exactly it a, well. appropriate euphemism, but yes. I'm going to go with a, a ribbed tank top undershirt. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Which Why also Peter did not I age love, well. That's, I love yeah. how just casual of a term that was. <laughs> Those were the days. No, right. I, I don't love it. I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> just casual, you know spousal abuse reference you know it's funny it was the 90s hmm. rule 44 states that the code blank sign above the color guard door may never go down if it does it shall be immediately replaced it was a number <sighs> and steve when he was thinking he said it wasn't a prime number <laughs> wow <That's> right <laughs> i have oh, and God. i don't remember what the sign even meant i don't either i remember there being a number code 12 Oh. And I think that was probably some other misogynistic reference. No, I don't know what Code 12 uh, was, but I have a vague recollection that it was something objectifying. Oh, I thought it... Maybe not. Was it, it, it was, a, was it a number that they picked or that, that was given? Because I feel like if it was... For some reason, I want to think it was like somebody was like having their period or something. Oh, I maybe. Remember. Maybe. I don't know. I think that was I, what it was. We need to find out. We need, I need to get mm. Ashcraft because he would know. I'm sure it was distasteful, whatever, in 100%. terms of being a, a, yes. a public public sign. Probably not exactly the most. <laughs> there was a reason whatever. there was a code. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. All right. Rule 55 informs us that the blank dance is the official dance of the tuba line. And this is one of the members' uh, nicknames. Oh, God. You're really stumping me here. I feel horrible. I feel like I've like it's all right. let, let everyone down. I would, have fail- I would have missed all of these. Oh. And you got um, at least you got C. Pratt's on a drummer. I don't know who had a dance. Matt Skills. Oh yeah, wait well, that was and that was who was that? Was that Paul? That was Paul. Yeah. Yeah, that was Paul. Rule fifty-seven. Right. You'll know this one. You'll know this one. Rule fifty-seven states that the blank dance should die with Steve Pratt graduating. The vanilla ice. Dance? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. All right, you got it. You got two. Yeah. Rule 60 correctly states that blank is and will forever be the prettiest member of the tuba line. You'll know this one too. It was one of the, it was one of my class. Was it was it Garrett? No, it was it was not Butch, but it was the Sundance Kid. Do you uh, remember? No, Patrick Ewart. Oh uh, yeah, no, Spike Tear. He I yeah. gotta get him on there here. On oh YouTube. man, Pat Pat. Yeah, that I feel like a photo of Patrick Ewart from that time period is i feel like the uh uh uh, platonic ideal of the attractive man in 2002 yeah teenager at at any rate yeah boy band yeah (laughs) all right here's the bonus question he could have been he's like jv boy band material anyway (laughs) you may know the bonus question this can save you this this will bump your score and your curve above steve's oh god crit fingers are crossed rule 46 states that during the right sectional time the Gary Blank drill will be administered with full explanation and execution, leaving all other sections to grovel in its perplexing wake. The Gary Blank drill. And his sister was in my class as well. Oh, crap. And her name was um, Katie. Oh, I, I remember Katie and I remember Gary. Think beer. What kind of beer would you drink? Stout. Stout, uh, Gary, Gary Stout. Stout. Yes, yes, I definitely remember <sighs> Gary and Katie Stout. Oh, I feel so. I feel like I've let down everyone. Um. Well, so we'll. I'll interview. We'll see. <laughs> I, I bet nobody else does any better than you just did. Other than Steve, well, he got eighty. What's funny is so yeah. For anyone like these were like printed out and and taped to the wall. Um. And and, and I feel like they were there for at least a good two years, possibly longer. Well, um, my recollection is that they were like long-standing tradition rules oh, of the no. drum line. And then I went back and read them, and I'm like, I'm mentioned in Rule 6, and oh, you know, no. all of I, my I friends, think they Paul must have been written at the end of our I, I, that year. I think Paul showed up and wrote like all of those and just taped them up, and, and we immediately were like, oh, yeah, this is... Like, it might have been possible hazing material in terms of just like, yeah, this is stuff you have to know. <laughs> yeah, that was a great time. That was really fun. <sighs> all right, so... In my wife's yearbook, you son of a... No, I'm kidding. In my wife's yearbook, you wrote, <laughs> Sally, wow, dot, dot, dot. What an exciting year in office aid it's been. Cutting, counting, and coloring useless squares for teams. Filing junk. The long talks on, uh, what did we talk about? Question mark. 
I'm sure we'll see each other over the summer. Living across the street tends to lead to that. Well, against my will, I signed your book, and I'd say quite sufficiently, too. Thanks for educating me on the game. Davis Cox, I don't know what that was. What is I don't the know. game? That seems, that seems questionable. <laughs> what does that what I'll, does that mean? I'll ask her to see if she knows. You have to ask her. Either. She's like, yeah, I don't know, no, for real. Some know. stupid inside joke. Probably. To me, you wrote half as much. I mean, I wasn't a pretty redhead, but... I'm sorry. My You're God, not. Minnie Darren. You even you even use the phrase in the yearbook thing. All right. My God, Minnie Darren. This year was pretty awesome. You got to beat the sophomore tubas next year into submission. Dot, dot, dot. Er, I mean, teach them. So we were all pretty nonchalant about assault and, and beating yes. people. Okay. I mean, just casual. Enjoy the pretty Susas. See you at sign May Camp. And that's it. Okay. I mean, I felt, I feel like Sally's was a little more personal, but. Uh, I'm but sorry. All right, all right, I'll take it. I'll I'm take sorry. it. I'm sorry. Okay, well, well thanks, for but, having, thanks for having back. Does that bring back memories? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't say anything too egregious yeah, right? or too too uh, 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 awful. So the right, signatures good jo- were always good job. like, what am I gonna? I gotta come up with something original to write to this person. Come on, man. Yeah, it's tough. So it's very tough. Here, here's a, here's an idea. I'll leave you with this idea because this was my brilliant idea. I never did as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Was to print out a stamp signature for yearbooks because when you're when your teacher students at you know all these students so I wanted to I wanted to make like a stamp like big one that said dear student comma you were such a unique student in my class and <laughs> so they clearly see it's just stamped on every yearbook bam I, I <laughs> and just pencil in their name absolutely oh, yeah man. I'm just gonna leave a blank yeah, I'm absolutely yeah, and, yeah, I love fill that in their name I love that. All right, man. That's amazing. All right. That was fun. (laughs) Talk to you later. Cool. Bye. See ya. All right. That was the show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Today's episode was recorded by Mark Dye. Our editor is Mark Dye, and he is also the executive producer. The intro and outro music was composed by Mark Dye in high school. It's really just me doing this. To support the How the Heck Have You Been podcast, visit artbymarker.com and buy some cool art. Thanks, y'all.